In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, amen. May the Lord bestow upon us his mercy, blessing, and grace, now and ever into the age of all ages, amen. Today is the Sunday of the little month. It is the last month in the Coptic year. Um, as we have said before, there is 12 full Coptic months of 30 days exactly, and there's one little month of five or six days if it's a leap year. And <clears throat> like what we were saying uh, last week, uh, when Daniel was mentioning, the last two Sundays of the Coptic calendar are related to the same theme, which is the end, because it's the end of the year. So we focus on the end of the world, the end of our life. <clears throat> and this end is a new beginning. So with, as the Lord said, I am the beginning and the end. And so um, with every end of something, there's a beginning of, of something else. Um, <clears throat> so in the last two weeks of the year, um, like we said, the theme is the end. And you can find the scripture from our Lord uh, explanation of what happens at the end of times or um, uh, the end of the destruction of the temple in the year 70 AD. Um, you can find it in Matthew 24, Mark chapter 13, and Luke chapter 21. And these last two Sundays, the church uses those three gospels more than once. So like, for example, today we read from the gospel according to St. Matthew. Last night, we read Mark chapter 13. Sorry, last night we read from Luke. Um, this morning we read from Mark chapter 13. And last Sunday was also um, the gospel according to uh, St. Mark chapter 13. <clears throat> and here the Lord reminds us of the second coming, of the, the judgment day, the end of our life, how to prepare for the end. Um, <clears throat> and um, some, of the, some of the descriptions the Lord gives are specifically for what happened in the year 70, but most of them are spiritual preparation for meeting the Lord, which is not a bad thing unless we're not ready, right? So that's why, um, as uh, Father Daniel mentioned last week, um, the main, the end of the gospel, uh, according to St. Mark, is to watch, to be prepared. Um, <clears throat> because when we're prepared for meeting Christ, we'll be happy will be joyful, will finally attain to be close to him, right? But if we're not prepared and we don't want to be with him, then it's going to be very fearful. Um, God, remove that from, from all of us. So um, the Lord gives more directions in the, these Gospels of what not to do rather than what to do. So last week, uh, we focused on what to do, which is basically to watch and to be prepared um, but there's a lot of discussion here um, about what not to do. So I summarize them into to four main points. <clears throat> the Lord says, uh, number one, sorry, do not be distressed, do not be drowsy or, or sleepy, right? Um, but watch, do not be deceived, do not be tricked, and don't get distracted. So um, today we focus on the things of the spirit, the people who focus on the things of the world or the things of the body, they will attain the things of the world and the things of the body. And when the world passes away and the, the body dies, then there's nothing to look forward to anymore. But those who focus on the spiritual things um, and those who focus on the heavenly things will attain the heavenly things. So how do you tell the difference? By what happens in the things of the world. If we're attached to the things of the world and the world doesn't go good for us, then we're sad and depressed and fearful and worried, right? Um, but um, the person who has their mind and their heart and their eyes set on heaven, it, they're not easily swayed by the things of the world and the things of this life. Um, so um, to the spiritual, this, the description or the thinking of the end of this world is not a fearful thing, but it brings joy and peace and love. And I can't wait till God comes um, to, to be, for me to be one with him, um, <clears throat> right? So it's the same thing at the end of the year. Some people are sad that the year is over, but if it's not necessarily a good year and, and you're hopeful that the next year is good, then it's the, it, there, there's 
there's two different ways to look at what happens at the end of the year. Okay, so we'll just go in, into um, it. So first thing is not to be worried. A lot of people, when they think of the end of their life, or they think of the end of the world, or they read certain parts in like the gospel that we mentioned, or that the book of Revelation, they get worried, they get stressed. Um, but the Lord says in the same gospel of today, um, like in Matthew 24, 13, he says, don't be troubled, um, for these things must come to pass. This is, everyone has to die before they get to heaven, right? So don't be troubled about the idea of death. Um, uh, and he says, do not worry beforehand or premeditate when he talks to the martyrs or the people who are going to suffer things before their departure or before the end of the world. Um, don't worry or premeditate what you're going to say for the Holy Spirit will tell you in that hour what to speak. Um, <coughs> and then in the gospel according to St. Luke, he says, the end won't come immediately. Um, even though when you hear of wars and rumor of wars and all these things must come to pass. Um, and sometimes when there's like a big sickness or a big war or a big earthquake, you know, um, people start saying, okay, this is the end of the world. Um, but here the Lord is saying the end will not come immediately. The person who is aware of all of the description of what happens at the end of the world, they'll see things lining up, right? So that's why we shouldn't be worried that it's the end of the world. It could be the end of my life. It could be the end of, you know, um, certain circumstances, but not necessarily the end of the world, <clears throat> right? So here the Lord says on what happens, men's hearts failing them from fear. So these are not the, the people of God, of course, the people who are far from God, who are trusting in the things of the world. Um, <clears throat> so the main point I think the Lord gives uh, in the gospel of today is not to worry about the physical things. Um, and we don't realize how much we trust in them until things go bad and then we start the worry comes out so that's just a reflection and we try to you know put a band-aid on the worry but it's a reflection of a bigger problem which is maybe i'm not trusting in the world god enough maybe i'm trusting in the things of the world um as long as they're going okay i'm okay and but if they're bad i'm, I'm going um to be in a different place with the christian it shouldn't be like that why? Because we have more important things to look forward to. Um, and so that's the first point. The second point is not to be drowsy. <laughs> um, uh, like Abuna Daniel said, to watch and to be ready, right? Um, and here, um, like no one knows the, the time of the end of the world. Um, not Most of us don't even know when the end of our life will be, but... Um, for the for all of us, we need to be prepared so that we won't be afraid. Um, and the Lord says in the gospel here, pray that your flight may not be in winter or on the Sabbath. And Saint Cyril here explains what why is he talking about winter um, or rest. Here it's a spiritual meaning. He's saying maybe this talks about the time of rest from good works, um, which the Sabbath talks about or the winter where things are cold and there's not no fruit. Um, so we say pray that God does not come to you when you are cold or when you are taking it easy. Um, that's, that's not a good sign, <laughs> right? Um, so <clears throat> um, we don't want God to be with us because we don't know when he's coming we always have to be ready we always have to be in the spiritual atmosphere as best as we can so that we can receive him and he can receive us with joy um and that's why every year and even every day in in the evening um midnight watch um the church organized prayers for that same point to be prepared to meet your savior um because who knows if we're going to wake up the next day or not. Um, if we're ready, let, let it come. Uh, Maranatha, let God come to me. Um, but if not, then that would be a very fearful thing. Um, <clears throat> so um, that's the second point, is not to be drowsy. The third point is not to be tricked, not to be deceived. 
Um, and so the Lord gives, again, many descriptions of what's going to happen um, uh, before the second coming. Um, and he, one important thing is that even some of the good Christians are going to be tricked and, and trust in people who are not good Christians um, or, or who are even being used by the devil, um, believe it or not. Right, and so the Lord says in the all three gospels here, He says, "Take heed that no one deceives you, for many will come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and will deceive many." So here the thing is, what, what, how are you going to tell? Well, the the easy thing is, we, Christ is not going to come in the same way that He came the first time. He's not um, going to come um, uh, being born of a woman in the flesh and to live a. Um, uh, 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 physical life in the flesh, he's going to come in the clouds in his glory um, to, to receive us to him, right? Um, but the person who's going to come in the, in, and say that I am the Christ and deceive people and maybe even um, make signs like um, call fire f from the sky. Um, if someone does that, does that mean you should trust in him? Of course not. The devil has power to do that. And the Antichrist will do that. Um, hopefully we're not around when that happens, but even if it, if we are, then we'll be, um, we should be quick to, to, to recount these words of Christ to say, oh, that's the Antichrist. Don't follow him no matter um, how many amazing things he does. Um, my trust is in the word of God and in the Christ who has already come and will come again in the clouds. Um, and so, this is one thing to think about, but another thing to think about is even if it's not the time of the end of the world, I have to make sure that I'm not tricked and believing something that's not true um, and not um, having the wrong type of theology that leads me along a specific path of life or a lifestyle that is against God or not with God, because who cares if it's the end of the world? If I'm on that wrong path, then it will be to my destruction, God forbid, right? <clears throat> um, and so um, we have to make sure that we have the right theology. And how do we do that? We stay close to the scriptures. We stay close in the spirit of prayer. We have the spirit of humility and obedience when we abide by the teachings of the church and the writings of the church fathers. Um, then we won't be deceived. <clears throat> um, so uh, these are just some of the points um, it, to, to remind us of how to be um, prepared in, in the right way. So um, the last point is not to be uh, distracted. So the Lord uh, gives the example here. Again, he's talking both about the end of the world, but also the end of Jerusalem. He's like, if you're on the housetop, don't go down to get anything out of your house. If you're in the field, don't go back to get anything. If, you're, if they say, look, Christ is in the desert, don't go out. So don't go out, don't go down, don't go back. Uh, like like um, uh, Lot's wife, she turned, right? She turned to see the, the old life and she got distracted from her goal, which was to go to the place of, of, uh, of safety, the place with God. She was with the angels who were uh, taking them by the hand, probably, um, out of the Sodom of, and Gomorrah. Um, why look back to the old life? So this is a reminder of not to return to, to the old way of life, um, the, the sinful life, um, and not to get distracted by the things of the world, but to have our eyes and our mind and our he heart set on Christ. Um, <clears throat> and it's kind of like, you know, when there's a, a, a fire and people start evacuating, so I'm not going to leave my house. Who cares about your house? <laughs> your life is more important than your valuables. Oh, I need to go get this, you know, um, precious video game. Who cares, <laughs> right? There's a fire, right? So the same idea with our spiritual life, sometimes we get too distracted with the things that are going to um, not last. Um, so uh, we have to remember uh, Lot's wife knowing like the Lord said, no one having set his hand to the plow um, and looking back is fit for the kingdom of heaven. We, there's no turning back. When we live a life with Christ and for Christ, um, we should try our best not to um, resort to the, to the old way of life. Like when the disciples, for example, after the Lord 
was crucified, some of them said, okay, let's just go back to our old job of fishing. Uh, that's, that's not, that was not the purpose. And so the Lord appeared to them and he performed a miracle again by the, catching the multitude of fish and they realized and Simon uh, Peter, you know, um, re repented and they, then they began to focus more on their, their service and their mission and, and the goal of the whole story of salvation. Um, now it was their time to continue um, the, the work of salvation to, to all the world. Um, <clears throat> so we shouldn't be drowsy, we shouldn't be distracted, we shouldn't be distressed, um, but we endure. Uh, and this is uh, the last uh, point, um, is that, or some, some people call this the, the martyr without blood, right? Um, because the Lord in the gospel says, he who endures to the end, shall be saved. The one who is able to get through it by the grace of God um, will be saved. And there's some, some of these tribulations are for a blessing or for you know, a reminder of the, the heavenly things or even a type of purification. Um, uh, for example, like when someone suffers a lot of sickness before their departure, it, it, it's a blessing in disguise because it helps them focus on the heavenly things, focus on the things that come, come after death, right? Um, <clears throat> and um, this is one thing, there's a story of one of um, the contemporary saints, um, Mother Irini, Tama Irini. Um, she used to pray for martyrdom um, and God gave her sickness. And then uh, the patron saint of the monastery, uh, Saint Mercurius Abusafin, it was said that he appeared to her and told her, you know, God allowed for your physical pain um, because this is a cross and you will gain glory for it. Um, and then he said, bearing pains with gratitude, with thanksgiving is considered martyrdom um, in the eyes of God. Um, and so, uh, and he was saying, these pains are equal to martyrdom. Um, of course, suffering for Christ in any circumstance, you know, whether it is, you know, getting the, the blessing of being a confessor or a martyr, which is very rare in these days, um, uh, is, is one thing. But sacrificing oneself for the Lord and for the Lord's people um, um, or enduring whatever suffering that you are in, um, uh, as you are um, uh, understanding that Christ is carrying this cross with you, is another story. Um, and uh, we're talking about Abu Sufyan, Abu Nalu'a Sidoros of blessed memory, uh, who departed this week. Um, he, uh, he said that uh, this year, this was the last, uh, he said this year, I'm going to say this is the year of my thanksgiving. Um, and he, would, he was in a lot of pain, um, as many of, uh, like we said, the, the saints who endure uh, suffering. Um, even when he couldn't speak in the last few weeks, um, uh, the thing you're doing Abuna, he would kiss uh, his hands back and forth to thank God. Even he couldn't speak, but he, he, he insisted, this is what I have to do in my suffering, is thank God for, for the good and for the bad. Um, and so um, this is the new type of martyrdom that we have set before us. The contemporary saints are teaching us, not only by words, but also their saintly life, that no matter what we face, because we are with Christ and we want to continue to be with him, we have to give thanks in everything, concerning everything and in everything, because no matter what happens, no one can separate us from the love of Christ. Um, so um, this is a hard task, um, but uh, uh, like, for example, like St. Augustine says, I don't want to hear from anyone saying, uh, you can't be a martyr. Why? Because uh, even though there's no persecution, but there's suffering. Um, so when we endure all of these things, um, we can be considered worthy of a crown um, uh, if we endure it with patience and with thanksgiving, focusing on Christ who suffered for us. Um, and so, uh, as the Lord says in the gospel of this today, he said, when you see all these things, you know that it is near, right? Um, and the idea, it's, it's very similar to uh, the concept of watchfulness. When we know that our life is short, that we will be prepared. When we know that all these signs of the times are preparing us for the, the second coming, 
will know that it is near. Um, but when I know that my life is very, is like a vapor, it is near. Um, and so some people say, well, the Lord is like, at, for example, at the end of the gospel or at the end of the scripture, sorry, in the book of Revelation, we're saying, Lord, come, right? He is coming quickly. Um, the Lord says, behold, I'm coming quickly. He said this 2,000 years ago. What do you mean quickly? The idea here is that we have to be recognizing that the kingdom is near to us, um, even though we might have 100 years or the end of the world might be, who knows, thousands of years or, or even a few years away, um, we still have the feeling that it is near um, uh, because we can experience the taste of the kingdom now. Um, and that's why the Lord says, when these things begin to happen, look up and lift your heads. Focus on uh, the, the Lord. Focus on the kingdom, not on the things of the world. Um, oh, this mountain fell. Or, oh, um, this, uh, this person died. Or there is the sickness here. Or, like, yes, all of these things will happen and continue to happen until the second coming. Yes, they'll get worse. But our redemption draws near. That's what's more important to focus on. So he says, when you see these things happening, know that the kingdom of God is near. God gives us these warnings to realize that the, the kingdom is near. And that nearness should make us happy and not sad, joyful and not afraid. Um, <clears throat> and so that's why the end of the scriptures, right? In Revelation, the Lord says, I am coming quickly. And then we say, our response Amen. So be it. Come, come, Lord Jesus. Come, come to me. Um, because without you, I, I have no hope. But with you, I can endure all things. And actually things get better. Um, maybe not outside, but inside. Um, so may the Lord give us his grace and his wisdom. And um, uh, not to be worried, not to be distracted, not to be far, um, but to taste the kingdom now so we can long for it and desire it and serve the king um, and gain entrance uh, on that day. Um, <clears throat> so when we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the age to come, we can hear that voice saying, come blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom that has been prepared for you since the foundation of the world. And glory be to him now and forever into the age. Does anyone have uh, any questions? questions uh